show. I am your host, Jay Jones. Black Entrepreneur Blueprint was created specifically to educate and inspire black entrepreneurs to launch, build, and grow successful businesses. Join us as we help build an economic power base in the black community by promoting business ownership. If you are currently an entrepreneur or want to be an entrepreneur, We invite you to join us every week here at Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, episode number 178. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and today we have another informative and outstanding episode for you. Today's show topic is how to sell wholesale to other retailers and create your own distributor network. Let me repeat that. How to sell wholesale to other retailers and create your own distributor network. And one of the things that that I started doing a little while ago, I use my my business as kind of like a testing ground or a lab where I kind of like to test things, see what works, see what doesn't work, and then try to make the adjustments. And not long ago, I uh, started a hot sauce business. And what I wanted to do was instead of going direct to consumer, I wanted to try to sell it via wholesale to retailers in store and also online retailers. So it's been going pretty well. Uh, just actually came out a couple of weeks ago. So it's in, in the beginning stages and new in the process here of trying to build this. Now, um, it's funny because the name or the brand of the hot sauce is at not actually the name that I was going to use. And I'll tell you why I created a different brand for my wholesale business. All right. But there's, there's several pros when you go direct wholesale. So if you're not familiar with wholesale is as opposed to you getting on Amazon or creating your own website and selling to the end user, uh, that's called retail. All right. So, but if you sell to middlemen, you're wholesaling to other retailers or other outlets and you're letting them sell your product. Now, there's a there's a couple of pros and, and a few cons to this too. But before we get into it, let me just give you some of the pros. Number one, when you sell wholesale, you want to sell in volume. Meaning that you're going to have a minimum order quantity. Now, you're not going to make as much if you sell direct to the consumer. But you're going to make it up by selling in volume. So, for example, with my hot sauce business, it's a minimum of 48 units. Okay, a minimum of 48 units. The more units they buy, the the less expensive it is for them per unit. Okay. Another pro is you actually, when you're looking at creating a distribution, a wholesale distribution network, you're actually selling a money-making proposition. Now you can sell that money-making proposition to individuals as a quote unquote business opportunity. Hey, if you want to push my, my hot sauce, Here's the wholesale price. Go out. I have point of purchase displays. You can put it in stores and you can mark it up and you can make money. Now, that's an individual or you can sell it to retailers, online retailers or brick and mortar retailers. All right. So you're also selling in volume. Number uh, another pro is you're building your own brand. All right. And that's paramount when you're starting a wholesale business. It's hard to wholesale something if you don't control the product. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Also, one of the pros is you control the pricing. So, you know, based on your volume, what you're producing, you know what your prices are and you know what you need to make, what your margin needs to be and what you need to sell it to to make money. And normally when you produce more, if the product is successful, that means your pricing is going to be reduced, which is going to increase your margin. And. One of the other pros, which is big, is leverage, leveraging others. Yes, leveraging others, contacts and also their resources. So those are some of the pros of wholesaling. Some of the cons are if you're just wholesaling, you're relying solely on other people or other companies to sell your product. Now, we'll talk about 
uh, should you compete with your with your wholesale clients or not. But so today's topic is how to sell wholesale to other retailers and create your own distributor network. Now, some people who I'm, I, I really enjoy e-commerce, I'm big in e-commerce and I like going direct to the consumer. But some people have issues going direct to the consumer because they may not have all the pieces in place, say their marketing, um, you know, their follow up sequences, their funnels or whatever you want to call it. So sometimes it's easier to sell wholesale to somebody that already has a network that has uh, customers already. And all you're doing is providing your product as another money making opportunity for that retailer or wholesaler. So I've come up with five steps on how to sell wholesale to other retailers and create your own distributor network. And step number one is quite obvious. You need to find or create a product that you control. All right. So even if it's private label or if you have exclusive rights to a specific product. Okay. Now, private label. That's my cat. Lucky that you may hear in the background. He's in here in my office. I don't know what he's doing. He's playing around. So. Uh, if you hear a cat, that's that, that's my buddy Lucky over there. Um, <laughs> so finding or creating a product. All right. Now, finding a product, you can go on Alibaba if you want a private label or if you have some type of exclusive agreement with another manufacturer, you can look at that. But I'm going to recommend creating your, your own product, private labeling, because that gives you absolute and total control. Now. If you come up with a product that anybody else can get anywhere else, then you don't have any control. All right. And I'll tell you, back in the day, I used to have a a business, Famous Amos Cookies. We had the distribution rights in the city of Philadelphia for Famous Amos Cookies. Now, they weren't exclusive distribution rights. So I'm over there competing with with BJ's and and some of the big uh, retailers. And they were actually getting the cookies for cheaper than I was. So I really had no control. I still made money. We still made money in the business, but we had no control because we didn't own or control the product. So when you when I say that, number one, you need to find or create a product. I really recommend that you private label and brand that product so you can control it totally. Now, for some product ideas, you know, what do you know? What are some of the things that, you know, industries that, you know, all right? Uh, can you mimic a successful product? Is there a product out there that you can mimic and you think you can take some market share? And you also want to look at, can people make money by distributing and selling your product? You have to have the margins available because people aren't going to sell the product or help move the product if the margins aren't there. So step number one in how to sell wholesale to other retailers and create your own distri- uh, distributor network Number one is find or create a product that you control. And if you listen to this show long enough, you know, I've I've talked about private labeling, Alibaba, you know, finding uh, other manufacturers or creating your actual own product yourself, depending upon what it is. You know, it could be as simple as going to a lip balm manufacturer, right? Private labeling that and getting that getting that out to the public. You buy it at a lower price, you sell it to a wholesaler or a distributor. And then they sell it retail. So you need to have the margins in there. All right. Step number two, which is very important. And please pay attention to this, guys, is create a complete wholesale package. When you're dealing in wholesaling, there's certain standards and practices that wholesalers look for. And the number one thing is a sell sheet, which is a basic description and pricing and the MSRP of your product manufacturers suggested retail price because they want to know what the margins are. A lot of times too, you want to let these, uh, let the distributors or let people know that this is the minimum that you can sell this product for because you don't want it to be a race to the bottom. Okay. So if you say the minimum that this can be sold retail is $5, all your distributors have to abide by that. I know sometimes it's hard to check on them, but the bottom line is you want to keep it competitive. All right. So number two, like I said, create a complete wholesale package. And the first part of that package is creating a sell sheet, a description and pricing and and basic information about your product. Part number two of a wholesale package, if you're going to be selling in stores, you know, brick and mortar, 
you want to have a point of purchase display for your retailers. So when you go to the supermarket, I'm sorry, convenience store, and you're on your way out and you see five hour energy all up on the counter, you'll see uh, chewing gum, you'll see all types of things. And counter space is, is very important when you're looking at retail, especially in a convenience store uh, scenario. So if you have a nice point of purchase display that tells what the product is, it has the pricing on there, nice looking display that you can just drop off or your distributors, I'm sorry, can just drop off at, at retail locations and they make it simple. So you need to have a point of purchase display. All right. And the more you create this ambiance or, or, or your package, the better it's going to sell. All right. The next part when you're creating your wholesale package is you need customized slash branded packaging. And that goes back to what I was saying in terms of finding and controlling a product. You can't control something if it's not yours. Right. So we're pretty much talking private label here and being able to customize or brand your packaging. That's what you definitely have to do. Um, the package must be retail ready if you're selling in brick and mortar locations. You're going to need a UPC code, which is a barcode. Now, if you're serious, you'll go to get your own barcodes at gs1.org. That's G Government Services, the number one dot org, where you can get your own barcode. So if any store scans it, it'll come back to your company. Or if you want to do it on the cheap to test it out, you can go and buy cheap barcodes online, but it's going to actually show up as somebody else's company. All right. The next step, you want to create minimum order quantities in your wholesale package. So like for me, for my hot sauce, 48 units is the minimum. You buy more than that, your pricing gets better. But I want to move 48 bottles. Okay. And I'm making about a dollar forty five dollar fifty per bottle from what it costs me, which is a dollar, a little less than a dollar fifty. And my wholesale price is three dollars. So I'm making a dollar fifty per bottle. Okay. And the MSRP suggested retail price is going to be five ninety nine. All right. So they'll make about a hundred percent, which is called keystoning in the retail industry. All right. So um, and that's pretty normal for retail. Now, a lot of places, the margins aren't that large. But if you're talking convenience stores, stuff like that, normally they want to get close to 100 percent, double their money. All right. And the last thing you want to look at is uh, you can actually drop ship your product to other retailers. So if you find that a retailer doesn't want to buy your product or wholesale your product up front and they're a large retailer that does a lot of volume. And if you want some additional income, you can say, OK, put my hot sauce on your website. You don't even have to buy it up front. When the order comes in, I get my money and then I'll sh drop ship it directly out to your customer. Now, it's a little more work, but sometimes it may be advantageous to you to do that. OK, if you think the volume will be there because it is kind of tedious. Now you're doing one off orders. So I would only do that. If it was a big retailer, online retailer, that was like, OK, I'm interested in your product. All right. So once again, let me just recap how to sell wholesale to other retailers and create your own distributor network. Step number one is find or create a product that you control. That's pretty much private label. Step number two, which we just went through, was create a whole a complete wholesale package. And in that package, you need a sell sheet. You need a point of purchase display for, for brick and mortar retailers. You need customized branding or packaging. You know, you must be retail ready, meaning you need a UPC code if your product is going to be sold in brick and mortar. And you also want to have minimum order quantities in your wholesale package. You're not selling one offs. You're selling, you know, cases, you know, whatever, 48, 96, 100, whatever you deem you feel necessary. And last, you need to look at possibly drop shipping your product if it makes sense for a large retailer who wants to carry your product but doesn't want to buy it up front. Okay, so step number three, you want to create a website for easy ordering. You want to make this thing as easy and as simple as possible. Okay, now there's all types of different e-commerce websites. You guys know I'm big on Shopify. And if you ever get to be a real big uh, wholesaler, 
Shopify has a platform called uh, Shopify Plus, which has some different additional features where you can go in or the, the, the wholesaler can go in and actually buy directly right there. But you can do that on a regular Shopify site. So you just want to have a wholesale facing website. So whatever people come on, if they want to buy your minimum order quantity, this is the price. All right. So step number three, create a website for easy ordering. Step number four, have a fulfillment system in place. Now, if, if you're starting off, you probably can fulfill your own orders. So for me, my hot sauce comes in cases of 48 units. So that's all I'm selling. So they're already pre-packed. Now all I have to do is put my label on it, shipping label, send it out, you know, charge for the, for the shipping and it's going out. So I'm not getting orders for 13 bottles where I have to go in and, and pull bottles out of the case. I'm selling by cases. So once you get to a point where it's too much for you, then you want to look at a fulfill a fulfillment uh, uh, service. Somebody like uh, I use ShipStation. ShipStation is uh, compatible with Shopify. It's compatible with ClickFunnels. So what you do is almost just like Amazon's FBA. You send your product to ShipStation, one of their warehouses. Once the order comes through, um, in Shopify, it'll know it'll uh, alert ShipStation and they'll send out your order. So when it gets too big and you don't want to be tied down by shipping every day, you know, moving your product like that, then you can create or, or integrate with ShipStation or any other fulfillment type of company. And before I finish, guys, I'm going to actually go over my hot sauce, my numbers there. All right. And number five, you don't want to undercut your distributors. So if you you got, I'm just going to make this this name up, uh, J. Jones Lip Balm, right? And you're selling to your wholesalers at a certain dollar amount. Some wholesalers will actually have their own retail site where they're selling the product too. Now, the problem comes in is if you're selling the product lower than what your, your wholesalers are. That means they're not going to get any business meaning that they're not going to reorder from you. So you don't want to cut your nose off to spite your face. All right? You don't want to cannibalize your sales. So one of the things that I did with my hot sauce uh, uh, business is I have two brands, same product, two different brands. One of the brands I sell only wholesale. I don't even sell it. This is the one I'm talking about now. I don't even sell it individually to retail. So all I'm doing is trying to build up a wholesale business for my hot sauce where I sell it to online retailers and also to brick and mortar retailers. I'm not going to compete with that. So once I get it out the door, I don't care what they do with it in terms of pricing, even though I do have an MSRP, a suggested price, and I have a floor price where I don't want them to sell it under that because you don't want to be have a race to the bottom. All right. Now, the reason I created a separate um, a hot sauce company is because it's the same formula. Everything is the same except the name. And the reason is I don't want to cannibalize my own sales. I still want to have control by selling the retail, but I also want to have another vertical where I sell wholesale. And the whole key is I don't want to compete with myself in terms of the name brand. I don't want to cannibalize and lose sales. And then also when I talk to prospective distributors, you know, through my wholesale channel, I can tell them, hey, I don't even sell. I don't compete against you. I'm I'm here just to provide the product and I help you whatever I can do to move it. So I'm not going to compete against you. And that's big when you're trying to open wholesale channels. So retailers want to know that you're not going to be undercutting them and selling right on the open market also. So once again, how to sell wholesale to other retailers and create your own distributor network. And how this came up was, once again, talking to a couple of my former coaching clients and some other people I know. And I was saying, you don't necessarily have to sell to retail. You don't have to necessarily build this crazy sales funnel uh, and, and spend more money in advertising than you're actually making selling the product one off. If you can sell in bulk, less profit per unit, but you have more, you make it up more with the volume. So wholesaling is great also. So let me tell you about my hot sauce, uh, my test. And like I said, I use my business as a lab, all right? I'm not going hog wild with this thing yet, all right? I only bought a couple hundred bottles. I'm testing it out. 
And uh, what I did was I, I actually had a, I didn't even create a special formula yet. All I did was private label a formula that somebody else has created. And if it moves well, then I may tweak the formula a little bit to make it mine, specifically mine. So what I did was I created this and I've had this idea years ago. Um, I've created this hot sauce brand. I private labeled it and I started a wholesale website and I started reaching out to retailers and distributors and also a quote unquote money making opportunity. So if there's some people out there that that already deliver or work in the convenience store space or or supermarkets, you know, they're called jobbers. Right. So, you know, people that have bread routes, you know, or cupcake routes, little Debbie's tasty cake, you know, the bread guys that have the bread routes, they go to all the convenience stores. So that's a big business. So they can bring on other products, too, if it makes sense. So if they if they deliver to a supermarket, they may be like, hey, we got this, you know, J. Jones hot sauce. You know, do you want to try it out? So there's big money in that. So what I did was I created this. I didn't go hog wild. Once again, you guys know how I am about testing. So you want to test the product. Now, if the product moves and continues to make money, I'm going to keep pushing it. But then what I'll also do is. I'll start the, the the brand that I go direct to retail with. All right. Direct to the consumer where I make more money. So I want to have a proof of concept, even though it's two verticals. I want to know if I'm able to move this. And once again, it doesn't take a lot of money to test it. All right. So here are my numbers for the volume that I'm buying right now with the hot sauce, which isn't a lot, a couple hundred bottles to start off with. I'm paying like a dollar forty nine. OK, I'm selling it to the wholesaler for three dollars okay so I'm, I'm making my money the the wholesaler is selling it to the store and i think he's making usually about four dollars he's making a dollar off of it each bottle and then the end price msrp is like 5.99 all right so the the stores aren't necessarily keystone in making a hundred percent but that's something that i can play with the higher the volume i produce of the hot sauce the lower the cost becomes to me and then I can reduce the pricing. So right now I'm in a testing phase to find out what price I'm going to have to end up with or settle with that'll move the product as fast as I need it moved. So right now it's testing, but so far I got a couple distributors. Uh, The product hasn't had time to sell through yet. So we'll see if it sells through and if people like it or not, if not, then I lost about five, $600 and that's all right. Because once again, it's a process. It's a learning process. I may have to tweak a couple of things. But I want you guys to start thinking about more than the traditional ways to make money. All right. So wholesaling is big. Everybody now is about Amazon and eBay and, you know, e-commerce. That's great. And I'm right there with you guys. But also look at wholesale. Start leveraging other people's contacts and networks and other retailers, customer bases to move product in volume. Once again, one of the biggest things about wholesaling is you get to move in volume. All right. And you're also selling a money making quote unquote proposition. Hey, carry my product and you can make money. And that's for retailers and individuals. So have you ever gone to the, to the mall and, and this is the truest form of this. You ever gone to the mall and you see the guys selling the $10 sunglasses, right? There's a company, I forgot what it's called, NYS or something like that. They started this years ago, back in the 90s. But all they're doing is buying sunglasses in bulk from a manufacturer. They're private labeling them and they're selling them to you wholesale so you can sell them retail. So it costs it costs you or it costs them a dollar for the sunglasses. They sell it to you for three dollars and you sell it for ten dollars. All right. You're playing the part of of buying wholesale. Okay. That's all that is. Most of the the kiosks and carts in in malls are all it is. It's a wholesale deal. You see around here, they have these pillows, the emoji pillows, right? They were kind of hot last year. I see a couple around now at the malls. All you're doing is buying direct from a a wholesaler who brings them in from China, marks the price up, sells them to you wholesale, and then you sell them retail. Same deal. It's the same deal. So wholesale is big. 
There's a company in North Jersey that we used to buy a lot of, uh, when we had the bamboo pillows, we'd have like sheet sets and pillowcases and all that. And all they did was they were bringing stuff in from China, you know, branding it under their own name, marking it up, selling it to us. And then we went in the malls and we sold it along with our bamboo pillows. So it was nothing new, but it's something that's been around and it's timeless. But the key is you have to be able to control or create that product. And the only way to do that is through private label. All right. So back to the bamboo pillow story. I was buying it wholesale from the manufacturer. So <laughs> I'm selling it for $49. Somebody walks by, they see it online. Oh man, I can get the same thing for $29 online. Or at the other mall, they may be selling it at a different price, a cheaper price. Because I had no control over the product. All right. And, and the bamboo pillow company, they didn't care what happened to it after they sold it wholesale. They could, they could care less. And they actually were selling it online too, which was cannibalizing everybody else's sales because they were selling it for real cheap. So if you want to be successful, don't undercut your wholesalers. That's why I created two different brands for my hot sauce thing. All right. So one is strictly wholesale. If that takes off and I know it works, I'll bring in my you know, uh, direct to consumer. So that's today's show guys, kind of short and sweet, but, um, it's something that I want you guys to start thinking about other verticals, you know, leveraging other people's and other businesses, contacts and customer data. So you can move product. And before I go guys, I want to let you know, uh, and I say it every week, but once again, last week's show was one of the most downloaded shows we had. Oh man, and it, it's it's all attributed to the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint family. Uh, please continue to spread the word about the show, the podcast, and the blog, uh, BlackEntrepreneurBlueprint.com. If you need to connect with me direct, my email is jjones at BlackEntrepreneurBlueprint.com, J-A-Y-J-O-N-E-S at BlackEntrepreneurBlueprint.com, Facebook, Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, Twitter, jjones one Instagram, J Jones for real. That's J A Y Jones, the number four R E A L. And also I have a YouTube channel, black entrepreneur blueprint. Just go to YouTube, type in black entrepreneur blueprint and the channel will pop up and guys, please subscribe to it. I drop a show every Monday morning, 5 a.m. Eastern standard time. All right. This is episode number 178. Haven't missed a Monday. Yeah. I've done some rebroadcasts cause I'm traveling and things of that nature. But I'm consistent and I do that because I love you guys and I want to get this information out to you. We got a real big 2018 coming up. Um, my my attention has been divided, you know, the, the last couple of months launching a couple of different products and things of that nature. But 2018, we're going to have a lot more guests and we're going to have a lot more informative sessions. And we're also going to be taking this on the road and we're looking to do, uh, to do some uh, meet and greets and travel about a little bit and get out to meet the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint family live and in living color face-to-face, baby. Love you guys. I'll see you same time next week. Peace.